one elite team is out to save lives. No medical crews on scene yet. No ambulance is required. We've just been called to a road traffic accident and the reports are that one of the patients is not breathing. These are the men and women who work for the air ambulance. It's taken the hospital to the patient. Open your eyes because it's easier for us to assess you. Okay. Uh, you can focus on me, you all right? Yeah, spot on. Fine, both carriageways closed now. With highly qualified doctors on board, air ambulances bring a hospital intensive care unit to the roadside. We have the skills to stay and play, not scoop and run. Yeah, at the end of the day, it could be our family lying there who needs help. Funded mostly by public donations, air ambulances respond to over 14,000 call-outs a year. Without the public raising money for us, we simply couldn't operate. There you go. Yeah. It's really, really important to be a team when you're out there. And working with some absolutely brilliant guys. No mind that bollocks, get the kettle on. You do need the banter because you do see some things. Best bit of the day. I absolutely love my job. <laughs> Let's have a good day. At Durham Tees Valley Airport, it's one of the hottest days of the summer. Jane Peacock has been a paramedic with the Great North Air Ambulance for 10 years. My daughter said, Christ, are you an old granny? I said, shut your face, they're comfortable. <laughs> what makes you think you're an old granny? Oh, bog off. She's also Deputy Director of Operations and runs things on base. You can't get your bloody suit on now. As a boss, Jane can be a hard taskmaster. 49 tomorrow, Stuart. Tomorrow? Are mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. How can I put it politely? Men just bring a whole new different meaning to the word challenging. <laughs> Dr. Dion! Hello, you all right? Good luck. The doctor on duty today is Dion Arbid. He's worked with Jane for eight years. It doesn't matter how tough the job is, it's always a good laugh when you work with Jane. How does it me, Dion and Stuart on a shift is always a really bad combination because Dion just attracts carnage. Be as daft as a brush one second and really focused and serious the next, but smashing lad to work with. We've had some really bad jobs over the years together and it's got now where I just look at him and give him the eyes and a little nod of the head as though oh, you were joking. <laughs> I'll just pass you to Stu because I'm going out, so I'll get going. Bye. Hiya. Sorry, mate, we've yeah. got a niner coming in as well. Just stand by. <laughs> the crew are called to a road traffic accident in Northumberland. Let's go. The casualty is 70 miles away, but it's just 20 minutes by helicopter. Hey. Yeah? Get any uh, clinical crack on this person or not? They've got nothing on him. Right. Uh, motorbike versus minibus. All right, cheers. Thanks, then. Bye. Yeah, Jane, just an update for you. There's a policeman on scene at this job. Uh, they're going to try and find out from them what's happening with the patient. There are another two jobs that I could send you to. I've got a bad feeling it's going to be one of them days, Jane. What's it mean? As we're never going to be in. Ambulance travelling left-hand side. 
was a 65 year old gentleman who's come off his motorbike and unfortunately slid under the minibus full of the party goers who were all dressed in 70s gear. Yeah, fully conscious, GCS 15, complaining about pain in his left shoulder and his right femur's gone there. Right. No neck pain at the moment and that's far down there. Peter, hello sir. Hi. My name's Dion, I'm the doctor off the air ambulance. Whereabouts have you got pain at the moment? Uh, left shoulder and obviously the left, no, the right leg. Your right leg, yeah. okay. We're off to Stockton for a 70s festival and we're coming up the road, which we know very well, and this a cyclist turned on its side and landed under my minibus. Nothing ever like that's happened to me before, so it was horrible. Do you feel short of breath at all? A uh, tiny little bit, but not, not too bad. Yeah. His BP is 79 over 46. Oh. OK. Yeah. Has he got a radio pulse? Yeah, a radio pulse. He did have a, a high heart rate and he did have a slightly low blood pressure, um, both of which are an indication that you know the patient might be bleeding internally. Do you want to go by land or...? Mm, not with that pressure. No. It's not great, Mike. Hey? It's not great. And I work with Jane a lot and um, she is on, on scene, uh, very astute and picks up problems early. Very cold and clammy. Mm. You haven't had any chest pain, Peter, or anything like that, have you? No. You haven't felt unwell prior to the incident? No. <laughs> it's very weak. Yeah. That's 197. Uh, 97. Yeah, let's go ahead. 6-3, just saying, no, we will be transporting. Yeah, we're done. Right, Peter, we're going to roll you flat now, OK? Good man. OK. All we can do on scene is treat the injuries that we can see. So if we, obviously we splint his leg to try and minimise the bleeding coming from that. We'll put a splint round a patient's pelvis um, so that at least if that's bleeding, we can stop it moving about and bleeding further. I've got your leg, love. It might hurt you a little bit, this, my love. It's quite often just a case of unlocking the puzzle and trying to work out if there's any clues there to any underlying injuries. I've got it right, it's right it's right. Patients amaze me. I'm totally impressed with how brave some are, because I'd be screaming like a little kid. <laughs> Over to me for a little cuddle now, my love. There's not many get this, trust me. Okay. You're special today, though. <laughs> okay. Bones can be repaired, they can be fixed, they can be pinned. If you bleed inside your torso from inside your pelvis or your abdomen or your chest, it's quite often a lot more difficult to deal with and it's more worrying for us. You tell me it's not hurting at all, is it, my love? Nothing at all left. If Peter is bleeding internally, he'll need blood. The crew aren't taking any chances and warn the hospital. Yeah, go ahead, Jen. Could you activate the major hemorrhage protocol, Stu? Yeah, I've got that all clear, Jen. Uh, I'll do it now. Peter, okay. how are you doing? Good man. Uh, we've got a patient coming to you in 10 minutes. He's going to have TXA and they're asking for major hemorrhage protocol. Yeah. Hey, you're hardcore, you, my love. <laughs> Can you? Hey, you're doing brilliantly. I don't think I'd be as tough as you. Thank you very much, everybody. Cluster 1012, Thank you. Peter's not out the woods just because he's in the helicopter. He's still a critical patient until he's had scans and x-rays, and sometimes quiet patients can be the more severely injured. En route to the hospital, obviously we continue to monitor the patient uh, and give them certain drugs, and in this case uh, he was given tranexamic acid, uh, which is a drug to help clotting, so if you continue to bleed, it limits how much you bleed, and it can buy us a bit more time to get them in the hospital. Standard 
the Great North Air Ambulance is en route to the Royal Victoria Infirmary in Newcastle. Advanced warning of Peter's condition means the hospital has blood ready for his arrival. Hi, Matt. No, I'm boiling. <laughs> okay, this is 65-year-old Peter, who's normally fit and well, no medicines, no allergies. High-speed motorbike, he's lost control on the ver on a hump, uh, come off and he's collided with a minibus. He was extricated from under the minibus by bystanders and we found him in the road. Injuries wise, he's got a left shoulder query, he's got a bit of tenderness right upper quadrant, tenderness around his pelvis and he's got a definite mid shaft right femur which is closed. He's been persistently hypotensive, the lowest he's been is mid 70s. He's had a gram of TXA, he's had tenomorphine and he's had four modas to allow us to straighten his leg. Rowan, if you crack on and do that. Slings on, yeah. Survey for us. I normally work as an A&E consultant as my day job, uh, but when I'm out doing pre-hospital care on the aircraft, Obviously our job is to transport the patient into the hospital and then hand over the care to the A&E team that are waiting for us. And that's where our job ends. Oh my word, Steve, you're a little hero. Oh, wow. I was going to say, I've got some Cornettos at the base for later, if we get back there. Not going to happen, is it? No. You haven't got much to do. Hello. Next stop. Oh, Steve. It's really rewarding handing over a stable patient because in the pre-hospital setting uh, years ago that sometimes wouldn't have happened. But pre-hospital care has come on so much, it obviously gives them a better chance of survival. Having finished as an incident, the crew of the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Air Ambulance are returning to their helicopter. Now the trick is going to be working out where we came in. The helicopter is very visible when it's in the air, but it can uh, get lost quite easily on the ground. I'll, I'll just run up and have a look. We're just trying to find an easier route back to the aircraft. So it's a bit, bit of heavy bush, really. I think it probably is easier this way. It's a bit of a gamble, but... Singers and gambling go for a walk. Nice little bit of hit training for the day. Finally reunited with the helicopter and pilot Dave, the crew can now make their way back to base at Thruxton near Andover. And you're clear right. Thank you. What's the track there? Where's that go? Yeah, it's just bombing track. It leads all the way down to the road just where you were. <laughs> see that? No, you didn't see that, John. It was making it up. I'm sure it did. Oh well, heading please, mate. That way. Okay. I've been flying around in helicopters for a lot of years, but I still get a buzz out of it. It's a nice slow approach because it keeps us clear of the traffic from the northeast. Feet. Okay, guys, you may jump out. Thank you very much, Dave. At base, the team are back on standby. Helimed 56 is deployed from a control centre near Winchester. The emergency desk is always manned by a trained air ambulance paramedic. On this shift, it's Fraser Robotham. Hems this Fraser speaking. Hello. Thanks, that's what I'll get them running now. Hi, Fraser. 
John uh, MDK for you. Uh, you're going into Wiltshire. What we've got is a cyclist, no helmet, uh, travelling about 20 mile an hour. Uh, he's reduced GCS, combative. Uh, crew on scene, again, incredible sit rep, uh, isolated brain trauma. Run away. Thanks for having to choose. Okay, thank you very much. Bye bye. crew have been called to a 16-year-old cyclist with a major head injury. Unfortunately, you know, trauma statistically is the biggest killer of young people, and um, we see that um, on a you know, weekly basis. Oh, I've got it visual below. Got it? Got the ambulance? Yep, seen. Got wires on the right. 100 feet. What's that look like, John? That looks pretty good, actually, Dave. Okay. Okay, we're down. Off you go. When we arrived on scene, uh, Callum was deeply unconscious and um, it was clear that we needed to get into a neurosurgical facility quickly. With a serious brain injury, we need to maintain the oxygen supply to their brain, so we often get them off to sleep so that we can take over their breathing. I just want to I'm take that comfortable doing it here. And some, um, if you're happy with that. I am, yeah. 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 If, if you are. If we can get yeah. suction close by and you can be here with kit. Yes. To hand Perfect. drugs I'll, I'll get here. Yeah. yeah. So, so are you dad? Mm. Would you like to talk through what we're going to do? Yes, basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, basically he's, uh, he has to stay at a fairly nasty head injury. So what we're going to do is we're going to protect his airway yeah. by giving him some drugs to relax him and, and paralyse his, his breathing so we can take over for him. Because we're wondering whether he had a fit which caused him to quit, fall off the bike, you see? Well, because he is an epileptic. Sure, and, and that may well be what's happened, but mm. uh, at the moment we do need to just, uh, just assist his breathing and protect him. So this is all to protect him at the moment, okay? Happy? Yes, thank you. For now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. no worries. Any questions, please ask. Sure. Getting a patient off to sleep is a risky thing to do, so having a controlled environment to do that is very helpful and it was in this instance quite useful to have the ambulance there just to be able to uh, create that safe space. I know what they're going through, obviously there's a hems per minute. John will be really busy setting up the RSI kit them. Ben will be working out drug dosages. Uh, Dave will probably be helping them by just uh, getting them some bits of kit off the helicopter. Uh, it's quite a detailed process. Sure, it must have been really difficult for Callum's dad watching what we were doing with Callum and not knowing how unwell he was. So, pre-oxygenation we're doing. SATS probe okay. is showing 98. Monitoring is attached and visible. Yes, I can see it from where I am. P cycle time. Come here. Come here. manually in one second. Got a view of epiglottis, I've got a grade one view, bougie going in, bougie's in, railroad. <laughs> okay, 
Tube team bougie out, that's at 22. CO2 trace, we have CO2, we have SAT of 99, slightly tacky but that's fine, so John, if you would hold the tube while I just have a listen to both sides of the chest and then we'll secure it. Until recently, giving a general anaesthetic is something that would only have been done in a hospital. And it's this kind of pre-hospital trauma work that's making all the difference to patient outcomes. We'll just get our infusion running to keep him asleep and then we'll make a move. Good evening, it's Fraser on the Hems desk at South Central. Could I please open the heli packets? Correct, yeah, they're coming from west of Salisbury with a, a trauma patient. Just before you go on, could you bowl us this rock uranium point? Getting the patient off to sleep allows us to stabilise them to an extent, but the brain injury, if there's a bleed inside the head, can only really be dealt with in a surgical facility, so uh, there's a, a definite clock ticking from that point on. The crew of the Hampshire and Isle of Wight Air Ambulance are en route to Southampton General Hospital with 16-year-old cyclist Callum. Happy with that pressure, Ben. Not entirely. When someone has a potential serious brain injury, uh, it's important that they get to hospital as quickly as possible. The clock is very much ticking, so you want a, a short flight. But there's a problem. Another air ambulance is on the helipad at the hospital. Yeah, is the helicopter you're looking at now, is it yellow? Dorset Somerset, yeah, Helimed 1-0. Yeah, so they've got about 12 minutes to get off the pad ready for this RSI patient, basically. Good evening, EC135 helicopter. We're inbound from the northwest. We're currently about, sorry, about 24 miles on your 290 radial. Flight to Calvary, Roger. I'm putting up one on the ground as a general, the 10 Alpha. But you turn around to control their space direct track VFR. There's nothing to do with South Central. I have no idea why they're there because I haven't been informed that they were going to land there. Nothing at all. So the problem I've got is that they need to get going as soon as they've unloaded the patient. No, no, we're bringing a, a cyclist uh, that's got a serious brain injury. Yeah, that's been RSI, so it's fine. Critical as well. Is that a 109 Alpha? No, 10 Alpha, it's Dorset Aircraft. No, oh, OK, sorry. Yeah, confirm that. They literally landed about a minute ago. I was made aware that they were coming in. Uh, I just made uh, a conversation with the hospital. They must move immediately uh, once it's safe to do so for your patient. Roger that, uh, Fraser. We'll remain obviously in the orbit until they've moved. Thank you. Did he say he's going to ring the department to get them to move? Yep. to get down on the helipad and know that uh, Callum can get into hospital and get the best possible treatment. OK, let's move. I'm going to come down with you and speak to the crew and then I'll come up with a plan. Cool.
Okay, he's fair enough for a handover. Yes, he is. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going outside. Right, everybody quiet, please. So this is Callum, who's 16, he's from New Zealand, over here with his family. He's a known epileptic on Ritalin and Ethylin. He has come off his cycle at just before 6 o'clock. He's got some abrasions to his face. He's got no other injuries other than the isolated head injury that we could find. And he's just needed a little bit of a bolus of um, 1 in 100,000 adrenaline just to keep his pressure topped up because it's been drifting a bit. Pupils are okay? Pupils are okay. Reactive and 3 millimeters. in hospital uh, you're still um, very much invested in how that patient's doing and, and so you still have that patient on your mind for a while uh, as you're heading back to base. I'm rerunning the job in my mind and thinking about how it went and what we could have done better. Teesside is experiencing the hottest summer in years. At the control desk of the Great North Air Ambulance, paramedic Stu is seven hours into his 12-hour shift. Air ambulance shift again. The crew are on their way back to base from Newcastle's Royal Victoria Infirmary. Sitting in a helicopter on a hot day is like sitting in a greenhouse at home with the door shut. Oh my God, I'm sweating like a fat lass. Yeah, Jane, I've got a possible diversion. Just minutes into their journey and the crew are diverted to an incident near North Shields. I tell you what, what a day. I know. And I think it's time to reapply for the lippy. <laughs> Yeah, Jen, um, if you go uh, east up towards the north of Newcastle, seat in Deleville. Um, sorry, Jen, but uh, this is a 22-year-old who's fallen and has a wooden post sticking out of his eye. Oh. Ah! Sorry. Oh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Jane hates eyes. Yeah, Jim, just looking at the job, um, patient. Made on the floor, difficulty breathing, fallen, wooden post, gone through his eye. Stop it! Don't repeat it. Uh, we had a Thank you. Yeah, Jim, yeah. I've seen lots of things in my career, but there's one thing I hate, and that is eye injuries. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this. I'll just whip it out and I'll have an eyeball on a stick. Oh, stop it! <laughs> Air ambulance, Stuart speaking. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. OK, I'm over the, uh, the goalpost at the moment. How's that there? Hi. Oh, they've just landed as well. <laughs> no, it's fine. What was it? All right. <laughs> Jane, can we get out here? Can we get out? Yeah, Jen, I've just had a call to say that you're probably not required. Um, this patient's been poked in the mouth with a stick. Oh. Stand down, it's in his mouth. But, Jen, that's still bad enough. If he's impaled. Can we get the crew to drive him round to the park, Stu? 
Yeah, actually, the uh, details are on the screen now. He's been eating a lolly gin, um, and the stickers scratched the inside of his mouth. Hold on. Yeah, Roger. Uh, we'll be leaving soon. Can I ask all your kiddies? We're going to start up again. We're stood down, Steve. Joking. Nah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lollipop stick that scratched the top of his mouth. <laughs> it's good for the patient, uh, but it's bad for us. You get called out, you spend money to go to something, and then there's nothing to do and you're not required. So, yeah, it can be frustrating at times. The crew think they're on their way back to base when another call comes in. Air ambulance just begin. All right, yeah, I'll pass that on to them now. Cheers, thanks, bye. All Dion and Jane know is two cars have collided at speed on a country road. You do never know what's going to happen, even once you're on scene. Road's closed, Steve. Roger. Right, OK, we'll land to the right of the trucks at the moment. That's my cunning plan. Yeah, it's a nasty little junction, that. Uh-huh. Right, we'll go just beyond where the bridge wall is. Sometimes it can be really awkward to land, um, so you have to take a little bit more time, little, be a little bit more cautious, but uh, I need to get the crew as close as I can so they can get to the patient as quickly as they can. Nothing on the left? Nothing on the left. Ah, OK. Take that, your tail's fine for the bridge. I'll just come left a little bit more so you can get the patient in. There you go, that should be about right. Exactly. Thank you, darling. Although the car's roof has been removed, a 30-year-old man is trapped inside. The other driver escaped with minor injuries. Who's complaining of central chest pain, C-spine tenderness, I'm breaking into shortness of breath. He can move all four limbs, he's got no deficit in any hands, arms or anything else. His legs are okay, his hands are okay. It's literally chest and neck. What's his name? Sam. Sam? Hello, mate, my name's Dion, I'm on the doctors off the air ambulance. Sam, are you normally fit and well? You can look at a vehicle um, and judge you know, the speed that's been going uh, by the amount of deformity of the vehicle. We suspect serious injury in that kind of situation where you've got huge intrusion into the passenger compartment of the vehicle. Sam, open your eyes, because it's easier for us to assess you then if you keep them open. Sam, have you got any pain up there on your chest? Uh, yeah. Go on this one. Any pain across here? Yeah. OK. Any pain across yeah. here? Oh, yeah. Any pain down the bottom? Oh. Is that sore? Yeah, yeah. He's got some seatbelt rationing glue up yeah. Very sore. His chest, um, his chest isn't great. No. Right, should we work on getting him out and then reassessing? Yeah. He's under the pedals at the yeah. minute. Yeah, he's put his own feet under there. Yeah, right, his feet were oh. out. Fine. That's it, love. We're just going to put a hard board in your back so we can get yeah, him out. Yeah, I mean, that's any concern. Oh. He's left side chest and he's diabetes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Your breathing's fine, but you don't want to go for your inside. Relax your arms, Sam. Relax your arms. Yeah. Jane's very good to work with on scene. She takes control and, and very caring for the patients. She cares a lot about them. Um, but she's also quite firm and knows exactly what she's doing. So she's a, a good paramedic to take control of the scene. And from a personal point of view, it allows me to get on with what I need to do. He was just scared, you know, and, and sometimes you don't have to stick needles into people, you don't have to give them medicine, you just have to be a human being talking to another human being and saying to them, look, everything's okay and just reassuring them, hold their hand. A lot of people lose sight of that, sometimes just about saying, you're going to be all right. If you, if you go up with them. That's it. OK. Bring us there again. Bring the board this way. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. No, no. <laughs> Careful, because that slips. 
Hold on, have you got to hold the board? Yeah, don't let go of the board. Right, can we get him any higher now? He's a very tall lad, and that makes it more difficult to get him out of the car. Oh, dearie me. Let's get him out on the floor, is he? You've got the board here. You've got the board there. When all emergency services are working together, when you're at the point of moving a patient or extricating them out of a vehicle, it's really important to have one voice to listen to. And even though I'm small, I can still make myself heard. Let's What's lift him out as he is on the floor. He's Someone's going to have to take... Are you OK there? Okay. Yeah. So can someone take this leg as he comes your way? Right, and we'll just leave him where he is for the minute and we'll sort him out and then... Right. Sam, wasn't it? Right. Sam, uh, yeah. listen to us. Have you got any pain across there now? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And this side? High-speed impacts can cause serious injury without external signs. So looking at the wreckage and looking at the damage that was caused, I was concerned that Sam might have further injuries. Not as much. Not as much. Not as much. OK. Sam, open your eyes. Come on. Come on, you're a big lad, right? We've found no injuries at the moment, other than Hi. you've got some abrasions where the seatbelt's got you, so calm down. <laughs> He's got air injury both sides. Okay. Guys, can we have hands again? We'll get them higher up the board. OK, put your arm round me. Come on, help me to help you. Right, right, come on. Your arms are working fine. There's a good lad. If things aren't too serious with the patient, it's nice to actually engage with them and get them to help you because, you know, it distracts their mind as well. Right, guys, it goes on the left-hand side, feet first. How tall are you, Sam? 6'6". Six, six. Right. <laughs> if you're very, very tall, it can sometimes be a bit of a squeeze to actually, you know, manoeuvre you in through the hatch, through the doorway. Ready? Spin that like one, two, three, yep. Oh, that's it, whoa. We might want to go back a bit. <laughs> Christ, he's not flying it, you know. I know he's a big one. Do you want to pivot him in? And hang on, I'll guide him. OK, let's go. Just bend your feet up for me, love. That's it, we've just got to wriggle you in because you're a big lad. That's all right. You could have given me a couple of inches. We managed to squeeze them in in the end. The crew will be taking Sam to the James Cook Hospital in Middlesbrough. Hi, it's Stuart from the Air Ambulance. Hi, uh, we're coming to you in about seven minutes. 30-year-old driver of a car, head on into another car. They've asked if we could have a hand on the pad. Um, he's a, quite large. Right. Ready, steady, go. <coughs> so if we can lift as long as we can, we're going to screw that mattress yeah. up, yeah. aren't we? Do you want to get in? Yeah. yeah. Well. Ready, steady, go. OK, and steady. ready, steady, go. <coughs> Just move backwards away from the... Uh, just yeah, just move the trolley. Seconds. Two, three. Well done. There you go. Right, then. OK. Right. 30-year-old uh, Sam, RTC, head-on impact on a country road. Um, quite a bit of damage, trapped at scene. He's got intact neurology. There's no other specific injuries apart from a couple of bumps and scrapes. Um, so it's mainly chest abdo um, from the impact on the steering wheel and the airbag. So my name's Ian Blaine, all the doctors, all right? We can have a look at you from top to toe, OK? Yeah. We'll have a look at you and we'll, we'll uh, get you sorted out, all right? Yeah. It is a sudden end to things uh, when you hand them over in hospital and then all of a sudden that's it. Hello, James Cook. But you never know, it could only be a minute or two and you're called straight back out and pick up the next patient then it's all go again. OK, ready for free takeoffs. OK, capture the P's. Yeah, just a step T's, the P's are good. Fuel. Uh, yeah, 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 280. Autopilot. It's engaged. Doors and harnesses. Uh, close locked on the right. Locked and tight from the left. I'm secure in the back. Brakes. And now off. And white. Selected. Okay. And it's uh, 1758. <laughs>
what I would like is another hobby that's got the sort of thrills and excitement of using the bike but without landing up in the air ambulance when something goes wrong. Uh, but at the moment I can't find one. It's a great feeling to know that you, or to feel that you've done a good job on that occasion, and that's made a difference to somebody's life. I'm going to be honest with you, legs. Yeah. Broken, you know, know that. that. Yeah, I saw that. Valuable time will be lost if we leave the limb as it is and allow it to go to the hospital. It's steep, isn't it? Yeah, there's no way to run around no there. Way to land at all now. I think it's enough, yeah. <laughs> Emma, you're okay. You're doing really well. It's 99. 